over a long, long term. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. So, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we had a, a really nice conversation yesterday. Uh, we kind of introduced the purpose of these talks. Uh, JC and Garth uh, presented uh, some of their work in the tutorials and links. Uh, Rob and Annette uh, also shared some links. And as we suggested yesterday, this is just our time to get together to uh, talk about uh, issues and opportunities and challenges, uh, to share support with each other. You know, the, the biggest thing I keep seeing and keep pushing is this isn't a time for. you know, social distance as much as this physical distance. And so this social connection and being able to support each other is really important. I did, uh, one of the things that came up yesterday, which I thought was really interesting, was there was a, a article that came up. Right, I'm going to turn that down. There you go. Uh, there was an interesting article that came up that I put in the chat about uh, why kids need teachers during these school closings. And I thought that was something that came out yesterday that was so important uh, because you all are needed and, and people need to, to see you and hear from you. And I was really impressed yesterday with some of the techniques and strategies that some of you are using to stay in touch with your kids, whether they be kindergartners or uh, seniors. So uh, today's talk, uh, again, feel free in the upper right hand corner of the chat, feel free to use that to ask questions as we go, to um, uh, share concerns, to talk about things you want tutorials on, uh, talk about topics that you'd like for future conversations. Today we discussed uh, that it would be a, uh, do you know we can't see your real face? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it's probably worthwhile. Uh, you, you probably don't want to see my real face anyway. Uh, but today uh, we talked about actually sharing some tools uh, that uh, you all could use. And so we'll start with Rob and then we'll uh, probably go to Garth. I think Jennifer's going to share a tool. Uh, and we will be talking about Flipgrid as well. So yeah, so Rob, let's go ahead and start with you. Okay, um, so I'm going to start with Padlet. What we've started with, what we've done um, on the, let me see if I can present my screen here. On the, uh, on the site, the uh, Research Center for Education Technology uh, Resources site that we, we put together, and it's trying to share it with you. Hopefully we'll share soon. Um, there, on the home page, we added a Padlet, and so there are three things that you can you can look at. So the reason why we're looking at Padlet is it's a great way to um, do some asynchronous uh, discussion or just uh, providing of information and bouncing off of each other if we if we need to. Um, so you'll see it says what online tool tools uh, do you feel you need help in grading? Um, what instructional ideas do you do you have or what? To implement but you don't know what tool to use so you're kind of just not sure how you go about implementing that remotely and what's something that you're willing to share and so as we go through this not just today but other, other the days following um, as we're continuing to, to do this remote learning I just suggest that you you fill that out just so we know how we can continue to help others um, so I'm going to switch over to Padlet itself so the re reason I like Padlet is I'm thinking to myself. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you real quick. We can't see your screen. You so can't I see my to... screen. No. Let me see. Oh, your screen. Okay, hold on. There you there go. There we go. Okay, so I you heard me talk about the the flip or the Padlet on the our our site here. So you'll see what I just talked about. You can get in there and add to that. But Padlet in, in general. I was thinking, you know, myself, how am I going to, how am I going to elicit discussion with my students? Um, you know, I, part of what I do as a computer teacher is talk a lot about digital citizenship. And I thought, what, what better thing to talk about than, than uh, 
how we're using social media at this point and how, we're, how kids are finding it uh, to be a positive influence, not just a negative with cyberbullying. So what I like about Padlet is it can be asynchronous because we don't have to be on at the same time. The, we've, we talked yesterday, for those that were here, that we're just having every single student on at the same time isn't going to happen. We can try, but I don't think it's going to work. And so, you know, I just put animal fun facts because my family's been watching the, the zoo presentations that have been around the state. And, and I thought, you know, this is something kids can do as far as discussion in the classroom. And so I put up, you know, porcupine, you know, they actually don't shoot their quills. And so as we can build this, all we, all we have to do is we, we're discussing together. So we can add our own down here, add our own, our own pace. And whether we say something different or not, we, we can continue to discuss that um, with our own title, our own pictures. You see the pictures and the gifts there that we're, the people have been adding. But we also can get in and we can, we can write more about with someone else. And we can just tie on to each other. This particular Padlet doesn't have any type of, of columns. It can be all over the place. Um, so if I switch real quick to my, my dashboard, when I made this, if you're like, I've never made this before, I, I got in, I should go back, I got in, I created the account, I did it with my Google account, so it literally took me minutes or seconds to, to get into to Padlet. But when I make one, I use the, the, the canvas uh, because it can scatter group any way I want it to. But you just select which one is best for you, whether you want it nice columns or a brick-like or a grid, whatever. And once you select that, you're just putting some information on the side, and it really is as easy as just then clicking the plus that's down on the side and, and making your own little paste uh, of, a, of a post-it note, if you will, on there. So I was looking at this as a... a really great way to to just have the asynchronous discussion. Um, if anybody, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but so if anybody... Hey, actually, Rob, could you hold I'm sorry. In on how yeah. they, I'm sorry. I know you stopped sharing your screen. Can you share it again and actually have people go? Because it was uh, not sharing when you were originally talking about the RSET one. Could you actually have people go? I know a lot of people have had experience with... Uh, with Padlet, but have them share your screen and actually go to that Padlet and have them try it oh, out. Sure. Actually, have them post something. Okay, so if you go to the uh, Research Center's resource page, which is rcetksu.org, if you could go to that site, the you know shortly down from the the header, you'll find our Padlet. Um, if you would go in and click a, a section and add it, you will we'll see how this works. Um, so, you know, someone put on Flipgrid on the iPad that they would like help with. And it will be, it should update live as I played with it on my own. It actually did update. So I don't see any new information. Oh, there, there is some coming up. So I just under the. Those, Rob. I posted those. Oh, Right before we started, the Math Learning math learning okay. Center and EdPuzzle and Screencastify, yes. Okay, great. Um, because it's, this is embedded in a website, you do have a, a little extra scrolling involved. If you were to embed the, or just look at the Flipgrid page, um, so I, I actually can do that if I go back to mine. So the actual Flipgrid page would look like this, and so it's you'll see a little bit more. Yeah, there's still some some scrolling, but you see a little bit more than you do on the embed. Um, but it's real time. So Peer Deck just just got added. Uh, Garth, you know, added those, and so your students could be could be discussing this whether they're on at the same time or not, um, or you could do that with your with your teams. So if you have a team of teachers, you're wondering, you know, what do we think about this? Or, you know, what are you going to do for your math instruction? Or how are you going to get your reading groups together? Uh, just a lot of different ways. I will tell you, too, this does, I pull this up on my phone, 
And although it's not as nice as it is to have a big screen, um, like on a computer, it does work on a phone. So if your kids are using iPads, uh, this, this should work as long as the iPad isn't so old. It doesn't meet the, the current app's uh, requirements. You know, it's interesting. So yesterday we had a conversation about showing up. Right. And, you know, if, if, you know, this is again based on research in K 12 online blended instruction, is that when a face to face teacher, you know, gets 25 kids in a classroom, you know, they're showing up because they're physically showing up. So, what does it look like to have kids show up in an online environment? And one of the interesting things that people pointed out yesterday is this remote check in. And it feels like Padlet would be a really, really interesting way to have them remotely check in on a given day, right? So, you ask a question, send that out, and then they get to, get to show up and share some answers, right? Rob, is that, have you used yeah, that? that? Yeah, that's, that's how, that's how um, I have not used this a lot, um, but talking to my own kids who have used it in class, that's exactly what they do. And so, for example, my, my oldest daughter, when she was in uh, middle school, they would, they would have a whole palette on the book that they, um, that they were reading and so they could post different things about whether it was the plot or the character development. And so that discussion was happen happening, um, but it always have to happen at the same time. So as we, as we move from discussion in class where kids are raising their hands, um, we move to no one has to raise their hand, they can just post. Mm. And so they also had a comment on each other's so if someone made a post about something, they had to say something about that person's idea um, about the book. So you, know, you can do this if you're really if you're really looking to keep some of the literature circle reading group kind of thing, especially for the for the elementary students. I could see you have a few padlets depending upon what book they're reading, and and they are discussing that in in also you're still leveling. Maybe not to the extent that you did in class, because I know all those leveled readers are in school. But if you're able to get some text in the kids' hands, you're still able then to by discuss through this. So that, that was that was how I saw it happen. You know, uh, I like to kind of throw it out to others on like if you've used this, how how have you used it in your classroom? I can speak to that a little bit. I've used it quite a bit, and I think um, you were kind of on the track of where I was, what we've done with it. So we typically are using it where the kids do something and come back and tell one fact. So it's a piece of formative assessment for an assignment you're doing. So if you were to assign, let's say, in a remote class, they read some article, you may have them come back and put one key thing that they took away from that article. It is your digital check-in as well. But they're also, you can use it as a formative assessment of like, what did the kids gain from the assignment we did? Um, I typically do that and then share across all the kids. So I would have 120 kids in the same Padlet so that they can actually see what other kids are writing. Usually there's so much differentiation in a sense they're using different articles or websites that there's a lot of ideas. Um, so that's one way you can, you can do it. Somebody brought up in the chat we should talk about Padlet. If, if you had them before, Padlet let you keep however many Padlets you had. If you sign up now, I believe it's three. Is that right, Robert? You're on mute again. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the outside noise from getting you. But uh, I've had it for such a long time that I don't have, I haven't found a limit um, to mine. So what I mean, I can try right as we're speaking. I have three on my on on mine, and so if I add a fourth one, it's letting me add a fourth one. So it might be because I've had it for for quite a long time. Yeah, I think if you were um, in it so before, would, you were grandfathered in with however many you had. So I had like nine on one account, so I'm grandfathered in with nine. They let you use them. The solution to that is you use yeah. it, and then. After a week, you delete that stuff off the Padlet and just reuse the same Padlet. So you can use them over and over, but you can't save the information for, you know, if you're going to do it that way. But that is a solution. And again, they may be giving away free 
um, the free account right now. I don't know. Mine's showing six right now. But again, I've had it for, it goes back four years. So. Yeah, I think it's all grandfathered in. If you had six when you grandfathered in, they let you keep them, but you couldn't, you're creating, you can only create three. It's either three or five. Well, let me try a different account here. So what the new account that I create, I have one with 23 because I had it for a long time and used it for a long time before that. But the new account that I created, it, I can only make three. Yeah, I think that's the reality. Yeah. We use it, we use it with our kids too. One of the other things that I like about it is the um, interaction that the kids can have. Yeah. Because you could set it so that kids could comment, kids can like. They like the they like the like feature, um, giving it stars, rating what kids, um, what other kids post on there. That's one of the other things that I like about it too. Um, you can get a lot of information in one spot and a lot of feedback, and um, then kids can also give each other feedback in there as well. Yeah, we I see a lot across the curriculum. K twelve is a uh, collaborative and brainstorming tool. You know, a teacher assigns something remotely. Kids are going to collaborate on something, and she or he doesn't necessarily want to just see the end product, but wants to see the collaborative process. And so, you know, going on a Padlet and actually brainstorming ideas in a paper or in a science experiment or something becomes a a really interesting way to show kind of a, a, a generative knowledge response. So. Hey, if I can right. show a quick thing with, with that in mind, the, um, how many of you are using Keep? Google Keep? Is, I guess see Jennifer raised her hand, but I can't see everybody. If, if Google Keep, you can also share collaboratively, which I'm using, I'm going to use in a few minutes anyways, but that can be collaboratively shared between kids with to-do lists and all that kind of stuff and, and imagery. So that's something else to keep in mind that is a Google product built into everything you already have. So if you have Gmail, you have Keep. It's already there. Garth, why don't you, uh, with that in mind, why don't you, why don't you, uh, why don't you present? Well, uh, um, okay. So the the things we were gonna, I, I don't know if anybody's seen Answer Garden. That was another little um, way to check. I'll show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and screen share. I typically have had problems recording, screen sharing, and doing all this, so this may not work for me. Um, I was trying to run a different computer, but I think that was causing the feedback, so I'll give this a shot, um, and we'll see if it continues. If I get kicked off, continue on. So um, in my screen, uh, I'm going to project up, uh, this is my Gmail. So Google Keep is over to the far left. Um, it's always embedded in your Gmail. Your calendar is to the upper right. Then you have Keep. Keep lets you organize ideas and be able to share them. So I'm going to copy these and put them both in, um, in this just so you can see an answer garden because I didn't know how else to keep the websites until we got here. So answer garden is a pretty simple uh, I'll just put that in the chat, and you guys can click on it. It's very, very similar to what we just did. So if you'll click on that link, um, I'll go to that as well, and we can kind of take a look. I had the Padlet up we were looking at. Answer Garden is pretty simple. The one thing is right now it's anonymous for you guys, but it literally is you can go type a question and then your kids can submit their answers and it will grow as you, um, as you move out. So if somebody answered immediately, it, lo it, it posts that up. There are filters on this, so you can filter out bad language. I did not filter you guys. So um, there are other things you can do, but ultimately it's just let you run. If somebody else types something else in, it will appear for everyone. Um, it will also organize, so if 10 people say running out of ideas, it will show 10 people doing that. Um, these are relatively simple. You can do as many as you want. You can run them for uh, an hour or up to a month. They'll let you run these so kids can keep using an answer garden. Um, they're relatively simple to make. Um, I don't think I'm going to walk through that whole process. If anybody wants to know, I, I can show you. I, it really is Google Answer Garden and click on it and it'll say get started and you just follow the directions and you're fine. So somebody put running out of ideas. I don't know if anybody else is going to add anything else, but it should load. 
automatically. There we go. I must not There's update it with all this stuff. So you start to get people's ideas as people, somebody's worried about their wife, me too. Mine. Um, so as you get this, it kind of just builds up. If, if JC, do you have to be on there? Do that um, running out of ideas again. It should reload and show more than two if you'll do it. So again, you can kind of pull main idea. Think about reading. You know, what was the most important just thing? Type, Pardon just me? type wife, wife again. It's the shortest. Oh, okay. Um, there it goes. It changed. Uh, what's yours look like? It may not reload on mine automatically because, again, what's going on. So I'll just reload okay. the page. But if you're doing like main idea, you could see kids pulling out what they thought was the main idea from the reading. Uh, wife now r running out of ideas. It's kind of like a word cloud. It's building it based on the number as well. So if you were doing, um, again, something about science, you know, I'm trying to think of other disciplines other than my own. But, you know, main idea would be one, I think. Again, pretty easy to use if anybody wants more, um, more detail on how to use these. Has anybody used them before? If so, uh, I'm going to stop screen sharing on this and just have maybe a little bit of a discussion if anybody wants to say anything about that, if they've ever used it. It's pretty simple. It's nice to get these ideas because as we've been doing it for a few days, um, and I know that in talking with other schools that have done it for a few weeks you know the first week the first few days is great for the kids because it's novel and they think it's exciting and then you get into week two and if everybody is still doing the same thing we've had to have some conversations with our teachers about you know make sure everyone's not asking for flip grits all day today and make sure everyone's not using screencastify you got to kind of coordinate with your partner teachers to make sure that all the kids aren't loaded up with the same thing every day but now they're starting to think about how can i make this different how can i make it more creative for them and use things that the kids haven't seen before but then the teachers need pd on that kind of stuff too so then my day gets filled up with showing them how to use things so this is something nice that's quick that i could show them and they can kind of run with and play with on their own so this is helpful yeah, and that is, just so you know, that when you go to build them, I mean, I'm sure you can Google it and see it pretty quickly. It, they're, they're based on your email, so they're tagged to your email, but you really need to save the address when you first build it because they're pretty hard to find otherwise. So as soon as you build it, bookmark that address, save it, because they're kind of hard to find once you, once you build them. So the other one I was going to try to do today, if, does everybody want to actually participate? Because we would need some people to participate. So... Um, I wanted to do a, oh wait, yeah, so this is kind of where we're going. Rob just talked about uh, a little collaborative work. So um, I already did like a quick tutorial on how I did this in case people wanted to see it, but I basically just am building a Google slide that we're all going to work in at the same time. Um, you know, if you haven't done that with students, it can be a little overwhelming to think about the kids all building at the same, and it doesn't have to be the same time. It's just kids can. So I'm going to go ahead and um, screen share again and kind of pull this up, if that's okay. So we're going to kind of move to this idea of um, another piece of collaboration, in this case, using Google Slides. So when I get into my email, i got to go back to Keep because I did everything back over here. So here's the link. I'm going to go ahead and give this to you guys and put it in the, uh, in the chat box if you'll click on it. So, um, did it go? JC, if you can just click on that, make sure it opens for everybody. Because, again, once I'm screen sharing, I can't really see and know if people are. Yep, it works. Okay, so let me see if I can find it now. Oh, actually, I'll just paste the link in. That's easier. All right, so what we thought we'd do is try something a little bit here. Um, if mine will load to it. So... Google Slides are pretty easy. Most of the kids have used them, so they're not too overwhelmed with them. And the other reason I kind of did this was a little bit of practice on some basic things to do in slides that may dress up your slides a little bit. And see, now I'm into freeze mode. Mine is not loading, so I may have to turn this off and just explain. Do you want me to show it? Yeah, why don't you show it for me, JC, because um, on my end, again, I'm recording this and doing, and so it seems to... Okay. 
So anyways, I just built a three slide show for you. And so slide one basically says, hey, this is just another way to think about remote learning. We're really trying to use screenshots, adding links and video to our slideshow. So I gave you a little bit of formal directions. Um, we're just going to add a new slide in. Add your name, email, and what you do in the slide. Um, two is going to add an image of your favorite go-to tech tool. Um, and then a link, if you can, put that to like their home page so that anybody on the slideshow can click on that link and go see what you're kind of pointing out. Um, and then, just for fun, what's your favorite high school musical video you can find on YouTube to add in? Uh, so I did mine, Social Studies, 7th grade, Paradox, probably my favorite. My go-to song of 1989 was Bobby Brown, My Prerogative. So that's always fun to listen to. Um, but you really learn some valuable skills here, and you can think about how you could use this with kids, giving them a variety. They would enjoy this. They're, they're doing some things. Again, I, I do this every year at the beginning of the year with um, like their ambitions in life. Where do you want to go in life and, and that kind of stuff. And they really do seem to enjoy this idea. It can get really confusing um, depending on the number of kids and how many slides. You know, you start building a slide and somebody clicks on your slide and they can kind of get in the way. But as JC's doing it, he's got his second one up. He's a big Flipgrid fan. So he's got, I don't know the song, but I know it's Prince. So well, that's 1999. I just want to let everybody know you were 1989. Yeah. So you're old. I am old. I am old. Um, and so at number six, I don't know who's working on slide five, but you can see people can be building. So even if we're letting people continue to build, if he goes to seven and eight, you will see that that stuff is happening all simultaneously. Now, this can happen if you did a Google Meet with your class and said, hey, we need to meet tomorrow for 20 minutes. We're going to do an activity together. Or you could screen capture this and slap it out there and let kids do it over a three-day period, add your slide. So I think this is something that would be a usable, um, a usable activity. I, I do it in the grad classes I teach now. We do it as the intro, and then we try to guess what your people graduated in based on their video they picked, which is always fun. Um, good time. So we'll give people a couple more minutes to add there, and, and maybe we can stop sharing because everybody has l this link, so you can always click on the links people gave you for the software. Um, you also have an email if you want to contact JC about Flipgrid. Now you know who to contact. He's telling you that's what he's good at or wants to or uses the most. As people put things in, we've got an email you can send an email to. You've got a link you can kind of explore, um, and that way the music is just for fun because... I'm pretty sure everybody will probably want to do a little Bobby Brown later, but it's more just for fun. But it also provides skills. Do you know how to put these things in a slideshow, which will add a little bit of uh, a little bit more for kids? Any questions on that as people are typing or rolling along? So see, I guess you can stop the. Well, you can keep the screen sharing. What did uh, Rick put? David Hasselhoff, it looks like. That's not David Hasselhoff, is it? No, I, uh, he he just started singing now. I think, or a couple years ago. How did you How did you know I like David Hasselhoff? <laughs> no, it's yeah. I. That's I the tiger. That's I the tiger. Come on. I was gonna say David so what's Hasselhoff. What's that like? Eighty four. It's the Germans that like David Hasselhoff. The Germans love him, but uh, yeah, but he's been singing for a long time. I have the tiger. Very good. So is it like 84? That's what I'm guessing. When I graduated? Yeah. No, I was actually uh, 90. So this was, because wasn't that earlier than that? Yeah, but you know, I went to a Christian, uh, Dutch Christian reform school, <laughs> so we weren't able to listen to it until we, you know, got out of school. <laughs> okay. That's right. Isn't that when Rocky uh, Three came out? Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Garth. I appreciate it. Did you also want to show, were you going to show uh, Paradeck? Well, I, I mean, by a show of hands, I can at least see four people in here. I know JC knows about it. Does anybody else ever use Paradeck? I think, Jennifer, you wrote Paradeck on the, so both of you. Um, is it so I know we're going to have 
have Jennifer present as well too. So do you want me to? to yeah, let jump? Jennifer go, and then we'll see about Pear Deck. See, I mean, I, I, if if they want to see Pear Deck, I can show them a brief overview of it. Um, I did not build a Pear Deck to have them participate in, but I could do that in about two minutes if we wanted to. I literally could turn our slideshow we just made into a Pear Deck, and we could take a guess on the years for some of the people if you want to see how Pear Deck That works. would be awesome. That's what I think you should do. I like that idea. All right, turn I'll turn it into a Pear Deck, and um, as you're presenting, I'll have it in a Pear Deck in a few minutes. Nice. Okay, so some of the ideas, some of the things that our teachers have been doing. Hey, Jennifer, um, sorry. Can you I'm sorry. I can. I'm so sorry. Yes. My, I, my name is Jennifer Conti, um, and I am the tech integration specialist at Immaculate Heart of Mary grade school in Cuyahoga Falls. And uh, I've been doing this. This is now my third year. So thank goodness I've been doing it for a little while because I can't imagine if this was people's first time trying to do all this with all that's going on. But we have had we've had a lot of success, success excuse me, with Screencastify. There were I, I don't. I can't think of any of our teachers that used it prior to um, going to remote learning. And in that week, we had a week in between. We started our distance learning this week, so last week we had time to meet together and talk and share. Um, and as teachers started to think about what they wanted to do, they real. You know, we came up with um, Screencastify and Flipgrid as the two ways that we could start sharing some lessons and ideas with our students. So. The app smashing with Screencastify is what has been the most helpful because all the teachers have different ways that they share knowledge and present to their students in the classroom. And so this was a way for them to take some of those things that they're already doing and then turn them into ways that their kids could see how to do that. Is anybody is everybody familiar with Screencastify here? Okay. So a couple of the things that they're using, um, one of... One of the tools that are, and I don't know what grade levels you guys are at, but um, if you've ever heard of the Math Learning Center, I'm going to share that in here really quick with you guys. Let me share my screen. Can you guys see that okay? I can on my end. Not yet. Oh, not yet. I'm not there yet. Sorry. There All we right. go. There we go. So the Math Learning Center, and teachers can use this. Um, they can push something out to the kids or they can use it with Screencastify. It will take them to different pages of virtual manipulatives. Um, so we use it on the web. Um, you can't. These are the these are the fraction options that they have. You can select the number of parts, type in what you want. So the, a lot of the teachers like this because they can show um, odd amounts of shapes. Um, you can put all of these on here. You can fill them in with different colors. Um, you can show equal amounts on the bar, um, different amounts, different colors in a circular pie chart. Um, kids can copy and paste these into Google Slides so that they can do the work on this page. And then they can post it sometimes on a shared Google Slide or on a slide that a teacher has pushed out a copy for each student to use. Um, you can add the, it'll add the values for it. Um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things in here. Um, little calculator that they can that they can use. This is a this is a nice one to play with, and there are other. I'm sorry. There are all kinds of tools to choose from. So they have. Let me see how we go back. I can't remember how we go back now. Clear the page. Um, start over. So if I go. Let me go back again. I don't know why the fraction one. Yeah, I, all I want to do is go back. There we go. Um, geo boards, math vocab cards. They can teach um, number frames, money pieces, clock time. All of these are there for them. Um, and like I said, they can use it to um, 
they can use it to Oh gosh, I have another teacher calling me. I'm sorry. This is what happens to me all day. <laughs> um, they can use this as an interactive tool for them. Um, and it's one that most of the lower grade teachers like. But I will say that whenever they're teaching fractions, I even have the 7th and 8th grade teachers that use it too with their students. Um, well, just for a second about Screencastify and how you're using combination with, with that. And then also, uh, Christy sure. asked a question about whether you know whether you can put in standards and it'll pull up uh, particular standards for grade level inside of Math Learning Center. In Math Learning Center, I don't know that. I don't know if there are standards available yet. Um, the teachers, when we first started using it, wanted a way um, to use something digital with their students as they were going home and doing homework for kids that didn't have, um, students that didn't have the manipulatives available to them at home. And so it really started out in our learning center. And so they had, um, you know, as their um, was listed on s some students' IEPs, they had certain, um, what do you call it, you know, parts of their plan where they had to use different ways besides hands-on manipulatives for their students. And so this is how th that came about. And then it overflowed into the classroom with other teachers sharing it with them. Um, they decided that that was something that they could use with their kids, too. A lot of them offer it as an option. Some of the kids like to work on their devices, and some of the kids like to physically manipulate what's, what the teacher has for them in the classroom. So it gives a little bit of choice. Um, but not that I know of. Christy, I'd have to look into that a little bit more to see um, about how to use it with the standards. I don't know. Is that helpful to you? <laughs> okay. Um, so to use it with Screencastify, if you bring up, I'll share my, I'll share my screen again. And as you're sharing your screen, I, I like the fact, because I'm looking at the audience list, I know we have a range of, of K-12 in here, so I like the okay. fact that you're talking about it being higher as well. So, you know, talk just for a second about how you see, as you're bringing up Screencastify, how you see it being used kind of across K-12, if you will. Well, I can, from, we go up through 8th grade, and I can tell you that in 7th and 8th grade, we, we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of teachers that struggle with how to, re they end up reteaching fractions almost every year. The fraction um, site is probably the one that the teachers use the most at the upper levels, um, because they find themselves each year having to go back in and reteach a lot of the concepts. So the visuals have been helpful. Um, for the older kids in the digital model because some of them consider the um, using those math manipulatives to be more elementary. And so this is maybe a little bit more sophisticated way for students to get a visual to help them understand some of those concepts that are involved with fractions that they haven't been able to master up to that point in seventh and eighth grade. Um, so that's where I see it being helpful in, you know, probably 7 through 12, a little bit more so than the lower grades. Um, so if you're on the site, let's say we go into fractions, um, and you can start a, you can simply use your Screencastify extension, and once you, if, if you want to teach the full lesson, you could just start Screencastify with the blank screen, and then teachers could walk the students through what they want them to do. Um, it could be showing them how to use just the, the math manipulatives website, or they could have a lesson where they can pose a question, and then the students have to demonstrate um, what they've learned using those manipulatives, and then you can simply click on the screen and copy the image, and then I can go over to, I'll bring in, the, um, sorry, I'll bring in our shared Google slide and just add a new blank slide. And then once a student has their answer, they can paste it. Obviously, I should have put something on there. Um, put a couple circles on here. Maybe they have to show equivalences, um, which I'm not doing at the moment because this is 
So once they have what is on their screen, they can go in and paste that on a slide. And then the teacher can see the work that they have done. It just becomes an image of the full screen there. So that's one way that they could use it um, with Screencastify. Like I said, to get kids could screencast. The other thing that might be nice too is we've we've shown our kids how to use Screencastify as well. So they could go in and actually walk the teacher through their um, the steps to solve it and why they're choosing what they're choosing um, to add a little bit of that verbiage and explanation to what it is that they're doing so you can get an idea of their thought process and not just having an answer on a page. They could um, visually explain that too. Um, the other thing that might be nice is, I know we talked a little bit about Flipgrid. The kids could Screencastify using this tool and then insert that Screencastify video as a Flipgrid response if they wanted to. Um, that's another possibility. I, I, I love Flipgrid. I could talk about Flipgrid all day, too. All right. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. Garth, did you want to, did you say you were sending a fair deck? Uh, yeah, I, I'm good to go. So, um, hey, before you start real quick, uh, Jennifer, as you were going over uh, the Screencastify, I, I put in the message box or the chat box there, the code, um, and I just signed up. I get You get free Screencastify until April 25th. Um, yes. Is the, and that's the with it. That's with it being unlimited. And correct? you can do as many as you want. Yes. Whereas before and you were limited on the number want. and the time. Yeah, I did, as the admin, I did go in, um, and there was a little bit of stuff that I had to do on my end to allow that for our teachers so they could have an extension of more than five minutes. Um, yeah, that's been, that's been helpful, too. But I also talked to them about the fact that you might not want to record something for more than five minutes because <laughs> you may lose the attention of some of your kids depending on what grade level you're at. Um, right. Yeah, it goes really fast, nice. so. Uh, yes. You get to explaining, even if it's directions for a, a unit or something, five minutes goes really fast. It does. It does. Some of the tutorials that I've done, I've been cut off just showing kids um, how to do different things. Yeah, so that I do, I do appreciate that. All right, hey JC, could you do me a favor and um, share your screen again? I'm gonna that way I can again run it this way. And I put in the I put in the box down there to go to uh, joinpd.com. So he's going to go. It didn't come up as a link link in the chat, so you can just copy that and paste it in your address bar. So JC, if you can do that, I'm gonna walk them through what they should be seeing. Go. You want me to run the pair deck or just? No, I just want you to go to the screen page where you join and how you join. So just go to oh, okay. joinpd.com. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Put it in there as a link. I just didn't copy it that way. So the code in there, um, once JC gets this rolling, it's pretty simple to join a Pear Deck. This can be done, you know, synchronously or whatever the other word is where you're not. But So the code is RXXZX. And then it should just load. And for those of you that are... Um, going to try this. It'll be helpful. Um, it always asks how you're feeling today. And then it's going to, if you've never used this before, it'll authorize your Gmail account. So I as you can see, I'm kind of in control of his computer, and so if you're on here as well, I'm in control of your computer. Um, so I'm using my computer in Kent, Ohio, to control everybody's computer wherever you're sitting. So the first thing I gave you is this one. So what do you think you learned from the chat so far today? What do you what have you liked? So I'd like you to try to type an answer. I know JC's under the hot seat because he's like typing, and everybody can see it. Um, I'm afraid of. Unfortunately, I should have had you run it, JC, because then you could show the answers. Um, but we'll just make it work. So, so on my end, I've had five people, seven people have responded. So I'm going to read to you very, very quickly what, it, what, it, what people said. 
Uh, managing Screencast via Math Learning Center have used both, but not in the way I saw today. Lots of teachers and administrators who care for their students. People are concerned about TP, <laughs> using Screencastify within other websites. Uh, so many ideas, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, people running out of ideas. There, is, uh, there are creative ways to use tools together. I forgot about Answer Garden. There's another thing I can do is I can lock your screen, so you'll see this. This obviously you wouldn't do when kids are <laughs> doing it remotely, but there's quite a few little controls to this you can do. So we'll go to the next one. It's a multiple choice answer. So just uh, on this collaborative Google or collaborative slideshow, do you love the idea? There's no way I'm not sure about that. That's a multiple choice. So the responses, again, I can see right now, I have five people who said they loved it. Um, one person said not sure. So if they change them, they would automatically update on mine. So if JC went to no way, my answer now here says I've got three that love it, one, uh, two that say no way, and one that says not sure now. So those will automatically update as kids are responding. Now I've got four, one, two, so people are playing with the different answers. Um, if you leave it, I'm going to move on to the next slide. We'll do. I tried to do a variety of slides in this, so we'll see how they work. Um, on this one, I kind of gave it to you and said, were there any directions you didn't know how to do? Maybe you didn't know how to screen capture, or maybe you didn't know how it looked like most people got the video. But again, now you can write whatever you choose. Um, maybe JC, I assume you know how to do all that, but maybe JC said, you know, I didn't have enough time to decorate, whatever it would be. Um, under responses, I knew how to do each step. Um, I was unsure about creating how to create a new slide. I learned how to add a new video. Well, that's good. You learned a, a task that you can probably use. It, no time to decorate, JC popped up. And then somebody deleted their response. So, um, But you can see the written work. So we'll move on. Um, this one, there's no question there. So you're like, what am I supposed to answer? Um, that's kind of my problem. I, was, I would have to ask a question. So in this case, how many of you have used uh, Flipgrid would be yes, no, or I need help to learn this. I don't really know how to use it. Right now we've got three and one. So three people have, have used, four people have used it. Um, one person says uh, no, they've never used it. And zero people said they need help to learn. Now we're up to five. So instantaneous information on my end. We'll skip some of these, but we'll try to do the other types. Um, I didn't put anything on mine because I told you what year I graduated. I didn't put anything, I think, on JC's because he wrote his year there. Um, but then this one, we got Rob's. So we got that song. What year do you think Rob Lane graduated in? Now, Rob, you can't answer. That would be totally unfair. And so here come our answers. So I got 1995, 2002, 1996, 1990, and 1993, 18, and now 1889. So Rob, which one is it? How, who's closest or what number? I, I graduated in 1992 from high school. Oh, whoever uh, said 93 is the closest. Yeah. So CNC Music Factory was my very first CD for those of us that were in the uh, 8-track slash uh, vinyl slash cassette slash CD er era. Um, yeah, it was my first CD. And I had the subwoofers in the car to match. That's pretty cool. Uh, Rick, I didn't do because he told us to. Here was the slide she just put in. So even though she, um, again, I, I, sorry, who was that? Was it Jennifer that put the slides in? I think so. She put it in, so because it was collaborative, it's there, but I didn't build any question for it because it wasn't there when I was building. Um, there was this one again. So I thought, sorry to interrupt, Garth. So fine. it's possible just to have content for your kids on a slide. Every slide doesn't have to be an interactive slide. You could share content and then maybe a few minutes later go to the next one and ask a question. Yeah, like this one. There's nothing there except for content, right? Right. And then I could go to this slide. And I actually did that for you on the next couple slides. We'll do one more guess of the year here. I don't know what song that is, but it looks like a big hair band to me. So, Oh, Nirvana. So that's like 90. Well, I'm not going to guess. Are you trying to trick us into guessing a woman's age? Because I, I don't think we're allowed to do that. Yeah, this could get... <laughs> well, we're basing it all off of video, so I think we're good. 
Um, I got 1995, 2001, 1990, 1997. I don't know if Kelly's still on. Nirvana, I think, is in the 2000s. So I would say 2004. I think they were big when I was in middle school, which was 94-ish. I don't know. Well, Kelly may have her mic muted. She can put it in the chat box. We'll check. Um, and that's as it loads. No, so I, I was actually came late to the party. on this was responding to an email from our grants person. So I didn't have time to do a video. I just did the song title. To my I, favorite I think I but, did that on the next page. I did something because yours wasn't oh, there, but I can't you. remember. But, so um, on the next you, one. Oh. Um, a little egg compared to the rest of the music. So I like Rick's comment that you can't, <coughs> excuse me, you can't uh, guess women's ages. That's like that's, not allowed here. That's kind of true. But what I did for yours and that is you mentioned Spark. So the I next slide, Spark. the next slide <laughs> I put up, um, is the Spark page embedded right onto your slideshow? So you can literally look at the Spark page. Oh, I thought you were going to put Bruce Springsteen up there. No, I didn't. No, so that actually should be live on his end. He should be able to scroll up and down and see. Um, I could not take you to the direct home page. So what I took you to was their blog. But in the three corners, you can embed a live web page. So you can force what page the kids are looking at. So that's a pretty nice feature. Um, I could have taken you guys anywhere to do that, but that's embedded in that particular one. Um, How did you do that again, Garth? How did you embed the, the web page? It's an option on Pear Deck to embed a web page. So I just picked that option, put the web page in, um, and now again, I can lock your screen. So it locks his screen. I could control what he could see, what he couldn't see from a distance. Yeah. Is that a pro version? Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask that. Um, pro, this may be a pro version. I'm not. Yeah. The drawing is for sure. I think that and the drawing are uh, pro. Oh. So I was the last one I was going to take you to. So we, that was how I kind of she did Spark. So I just brought in the web page so you could see Spark. Um, it's a pretty nice. Uh, no, they do not have to be in live. They would need the code. So I would just take the code like I did with you guys and project it in the chat box or put it in Google Classroom or put it in a website have the code there and the kids can join. You can turn it on to self-paced, which I'll do in just a second, and then you'll control the slideshow and you'll see how it works in a second. Um, the last one I was gonna do was a draw. This is a pro version, but I ask you to draw the state of Ohio. Um, so now you can draw images, you can draw, you know, you could draw cell mitosis or meiosis or whatever it is. Uh, but anyways, you guys can draw, try to draw Ohio. The problem is this one, see you shouldn't have done that first. That's pretty clever. Um, I usually tweet out. I'll, I'll, I'll post the pictures because you can't. I can't show you all the people's drawings, but they're usually pretty interesting. Um, this Ohio looks like a square, but everybody's kind of drawn. Some people are labeling with blue dots and and drawing, and haven't found that you can type text on there. JC, that's a really good Ohio. Thanks, buddy. I've yeah. been practicing. Hey, yeah. Um. And then if you label, you can do text. Maybe he'll show you one text since he's got it available. Um, he's just putting his dots on where he thinks the cities are. And then he can go to text. This is tricky, though, the text. Um, I don't know what he's typing, but the text is a little tricky. Sometimes it repeats over and over, and you've got to be careful how you mess with it. But that's the draw feature of Paradox. Um, somebody drew Ohio with a smiley face and a nose and a happy red face, which I could show you. Um, the other piece of this, I'm going to actually do this now. I'm going to turn it on to what's called student self-paced. Now you control the slideshow. Go wherever you want. You can change your answers. You can add more answers. You can do whatever you want. I don't control your computer anymore. This is, would be where the kids could work on it you know, for three days. And it doesn't matter when they go and work on it. It's available to them to work on and to add their slides or to do whatever it may be. So this is now he's able to go and he can click on other things and go wherever he wants to go. So then you could set up like a due date for this. You could give him a few days to work on it. Then you could go back in and you're still going to see all of the data once, once you know, the time is up and you're. Yes, you can set. Um, 
typically it, it'll go self-paced and correct me if I'm wrong on this JC I think it'll go self-paced for like a month and then it automatically turns off so you can set it up and say hey you have this week to do it you need to have your work done by 11 o'clock on Sunday night or whatever your school district says and then that next morning whoever submitted you have digital check-ins because their answers are there and their names because they're tagged with Google on my end I have all their names they can't like they can't um, what's the word I want to use they can't like fake a name edit what they've done oh yeah. fake a name oh okay yeah uh, now I'm gonna try to do this I know this is very very bad to try if you'll stop screen sharing, I'm just going to use my camera and have my other screen so you can see some of what it looks like on my side. I do apologize. I couldn't do this. Um, but again, my computer tends to freeze when I do that all the time. So on my end, I do have the controls, and I can go into any slide, and I can see your name. I don't know if you can see that. I can't tell. No. Move it down a little bit now. Perfect. Okay, so you can see JC answered this, Jennifer answered this, she deleted a response. So you can see what people write on my end all the time. So when I'm on a slide here, the other way I can see it is there's the drawings. So you're seeing people's drawings. I'm looking at your answers for the drawings. Whereas I can just click over here and hide the answers and I'm back to that main page. So I'm able to kind of click through and go wherever I want and I can get to a certain page and say, okay, I want to see the answers. I can click them and I can see the answers. Here there's no name, so it's non-threatening to kids. I'm projecting, but you can't see any name. But I'm also running, which I can't find leaning around the way I am, but I'm also running that other form in the background where I can see everybody's names and who answered what. So you can really have multiple things going on. Garth, I don't I don't want to stop you at all. This is phenomenal, but no, I'm also uh, I'm cognizant of the time. Uh, we promise you we'd all be here from 1 to 2. So thank you so much today for joining us. Uh, we will be here again tomorrow between 1 and 2. I do have a request for you. Um, so on the Teach uh, for Tomorrow, Teach for Tomorrow website, and also on the KSU website, and I will share both of those in the link, uh, there is a uh, Google form. Uh, we'd love to know what do you want to talk about? What do you want to see? What do you need help with? Um, you know, what's a good topic for tomorrow's conversation? Uh, you can email us. Uh, you saw our emails in there. You know us. You can email us personally. Uh, you can ask for help. You can talk, uh, suggest potential topics for tomorrow. And we would look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, again, same time, same place, same channel. So thank you so much to all the presenters. Uh, thank you for all of you who have joined with us. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for joining, Jennifer. Thank you. That was helpful. Jennifer was great. <clears throat> Thanks, Annette. Yeah, it was nice having you here. I hope we'll see you we... Yes. No kids up yet, JC? One did. Evan came in. He wanted to talk to you, but well, I didn't know him. Tell him I'll talk to him later. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop this recording. I need to jump off as well, so um, let me know what we decide for tomorrow, and uh, we'll pick it up.